Um, can you tell us, Savitri, about uh, your own training in uh, classical Indian dance? Uh, <coughs> my exposure started when I was very, very young, two or three years old, when my father had a troupe of Kathakali. It's a theatrical dance performed by men, very elaborate makeup like gods and demons. And the whole night we used to sit on the ground and watch this coming alive. In the candlelight, there was no electricity in the villages. And in the middle of the night, the child falls asleep on the lap of the mother. And when something very important is happening, the mother wakes up the child to say, look, look. And when I wake up sometimes, it is a demon pulling out the intestines <laughs> of, the <laughs> of the enemy. And with all the blood in his mouth and hand, he's making a kind of eerie sound at 2 o'clock in the morning. And coming through the audience, to the place where the show is going on near the temple. And this was the vision very often that she woke me up to see because the entrance is so dramatic. That's what she was thinking in her mind. I was shivering with fear when I looked at this. But I got so used to it, this dramatic endeavor. And that's how I grew up with that. And they sent me to a school, academy, which was founded almost at the same time as Jacob Pillow in India in the 1935 by a very very enterprising visionary lady called Rukmini Devi, who founded this academy, Kalakshetra, where my parents sent me at the age of seven or eight. And I made major through eight years of training there. And that's Bharatanatyam, the style that she was mentioning. And then I went through my the rest of the studies, university education, etc., etc., and got a scholarship to do comparative choreography outside India. And I chose Maurice Bejar, who was at that time creating a work called Mes pour le temps présent, which means mm, like rites of spring. It was the rites of the present day. So it was all about the 1968 um, the student revolution in France and the upheaval, the hippie movement, everything, but where there was a lot of spiritual strength behind what is going to stay back in them. I came, I took part, and of course I had a long, long tenure. Till he passed away a few months ago, we were still collaborating. That's my trip to the West. And I met my future husband, married, settled, brought up two children there, and Shantala has taken over the dance. As she said, the transmission is done. What we receive, we have to transmit before our end of our lives to somebody worthy and worthwhile who will continue something to the rest of humanity. The way I dance Kuchipudi today is uh, greatly influenced by all the different um, experiences that I've had in dance and theater, definitely. Probably the largest or the strongest influence is the work with Pina Bausch because it's been going on for the past 10 years. And it's probably the one that's been the deepest and that's continuing now. Um, so I would say that it's not something extremely conscious. I don't try to think what are the elements now that I'm going to put into Indian dance that come from contemporary dance or something like that. But I think that the approach to um, forming movement, the approach to, um, to dancing itself is definitely influenced by a different kind of movement mm -hmm. coming from the work with Pina Bausch. In a sense of timing, I would say, in a sense of dynamics of the movement, um, something to do with symmetry. Indian dance tends to be very symmetrical. <coughs> it's very, uh, usually what you do on the right, you repeat on the left many times. It's very symmetrical. Contemporary dance is not. So things like that, which sort of seep into the way that now I dance Kuchipudi, which is remains completely traditional, but has, um, innovations in it as well. Uh -huh. Get back to uh, Savitri, you, you uh, mentioned that you had uh, come to Paris initially to do a study um, com comparing um, Indian classical dance and ballet. Yes, yes, yes that's right. But uh, when I, as soon as I arrived and saw for the first time the way they choreographed or a finished choreography, I knew that there was nothing to compare about. <laughs> so it was just maybe m my idea of coming away from my country to see the world or to be exposed to. Well, could you, could you enumerate some of those differences? You say there's no compare. Can you enumerate some of the difference for us? I think that's so interesting. The very first thing, as he mentioned, was that when I first watched the classes and the choreography of Beja, and he was doing something on India at that time, it was called bhakti, means adoring God. And, uh, and the music was Indian. Some of the movements were, the story was purely Indian. But it was put in such an aesthetically beautiful form. 
I was very touched by it. So for me, they were all representing gods, Krishna, Rama and Shiva on the stage. So we tend to venerate them and adore them as human beings who are incarnating the gods. For, in, for an example, we used to have an epic of Ramayana and Mahabharata being uh, given on the television screen for years and years in India. And everybody used to, those who could on Sunday morning, stop all activity and bring offering of flowers and incense and sit in front of the television because the gods were going to come alive on the screen. It, to that extent, it is this identity, identify themselves with that. So for me, these people who were looking so pure in their white dresses and doing these movements so different from ours, the ballet movements, really came down as gods. And I watched them the whole day and I was so attracted by it. And in the evening, when we came out of the theater, we were walking around and I was following what they were going to do after this. Normally in India, the dancers go for their ceremonial bath and ablution, then prayer. And, and I saw them through the window. They were all going to a bar there. <laughs> and they were smoking and drinking and dancing and jumping around. I said, these gods can't do that. <laughs> I was so horrified to see that. It took me time to understand that life is something else. Dance and what you portray is something else in the West. It's not a continuity of your daily life and your own tradition which you live. Whether we leave the stage or go home, it's the same thing we are doing there. The same gestures, the same prayer, the same way of eating, the same way of... There's no difference between that. That's the main first difference I found. <laughs>